Okay, we're going to take a look at the game Borodino, Battle of the Moscova, 1812. It was part of GMT's Triumph and Glory series, and the game was produced in 2004. The designer was Richard Berg. Now, I have not played the game yet, so we're going to take a look at the board, the pieces, some of the rules, and uh, get a sense of what the game is all about. Now, my edition of the game came with two maps, which kind of puzzled me a bit, uh, until I saw the errata, and I'll show you why GMT included uh, two maps with the game. The final map, you have the <clears throat> Great Redoubt delineated, and uh, these fleshes, these redoubts that were around the near the town of Shevardino. But um, I guess in a printing error, the original game did not um, indicate the Great Redoubt and the fleshes, so uh, GMT graciously um, gave us two maps correcting it, so uh, that was kind of nice to see. Now I've sorted the counters generally by core, but we're going to take a look at the individual units in a moment, and uh, you're going to see that the individual units are actually kind of battalions and regiments, and uh, the artillery units are brigade, and you've got several uh, leaders, of course. So let's take a look at the counters. Okay, here are a few sample units from the French First Corps. You can see the counters are quite colorful. And the blue band at the top of the counters indicates the core that the uh, units belong to. You can see the yellow band here, blue band for the First Corps. And this is a flipped unit, showing you the uh, unit once it's taken casualties. And uh, I'll explain the combat values of each uh, counter. Okay, infantry, for example, the 10, in this case, is the um, shock strength of the unit. The 5 is the cohesion value of the unit, quite important. And the 4 is the uh, movement allowance of the unit. Over here, the plus 1 indicates the fire, a defensive fire die roll modifier. And there you have the core designation also, and the historical designation of the unit in particular. Now, for artillery, You've got there the um, fire strength of the unit, again the cohesion value, the movement allowance, and these two numbers here are the effective fire ranges. There's the effective fire range, which is 3, and um, the maximum fire range, which is 5. That's the distance in hexes, and of course the historical designation of the unit there too. And most units do have a flip side. For example, when this unit takes casualties, the values would be correspondingly lower. Notice also that the Russians are also very colorful, and uh, the unit information, of course, is the same. And they also have reduced steps, of course. Now, note also that in my little video here, I'm showing the units facing the spine of the hexes rather than the hex side. And that's because... Um, Facing the hex spine gives um, kind of the feel of the linearity of the period. For example, when a unit is facing the hex spine, its two frontal hexes are here, its two flank hexes are here, and the two rear hexes are here. So um, I kind of like the idea of uh, units in 18th century armies facing the hex spine. It just seems to show the... Um, kind of the linearity of the period much better than facing uh, hex sides. Here we have the two opposing leaders, of course, General Kutuzov and Napoleon, and there's a mine of information on these counters, too. For Kutuzov, the 5 is the delay rating, and the number below it is the orders range, which is a 2, and this uh, question mark uh, rating is the orders rating, and uh, we'd have to look up the rules to see the particulars of that. Uh, this yellow number with the minus 2 is the command rating die roll modifier, which in this case happens to be a 2, and um, the movement allowance, which is 4. Napoleon, of course, has the corresponding numbers, but he does not have a delay rating like a Tuzov does. And uh, I don't remember why the um, movement allowance is variable. Napoleon. I think he rolled a die and uh, his movement can be variable each turn. Kutuzov happens to be low because he wasn't too mobile at the Battle of Board, you know. He's quite aging by that time. So that's the two commanders. 
that we have in the game. Now the game uses a chit-pull system to activate the various cores. So each core has a corresponding uh, set of counters. I believe there's two. In this case, this is Poniatowski's French fifth core. And these core markers are placed in the pool and drawn randomly. And that will determine which core at the time moves. Um, I've yet to try it, but I kind of like it. It's going to be uh, give quite a, a bit of randomness to the game, I suspect. Because you'll never know which core is going to move. Okay, the stacking rules are more or less that you're allowed to have three units on the same square. You're allowed to have two infantry units and one artillery. Now, if you have a case where all three infantry units are from the same brigade, uh, they can stack together, but generally three units. So that gives you an idea of the scale and area. Actually, while we're at it, let's look up and see what the scale of the game is. Okay, the game is fairly tactical. The scale, as produced in the manual, says that the hexes are 325 yards per hex, and each turn represents about 75 minutes. Each infantry shock strength uh, equals about 200 men. That gives you an idea then of the scale of the game. It's quite tactical, and as you can see from the counter sortation, uh, there's quite a lot of counters in there. Okay, what I'm going to do now is set up the Shevardino Redoubt scenario, and then we'll take a look at the map a bit. And let's see how long it takes to set up that scenario. Okay, that's the setup for the Shevardino scenario, and I'll zoom in in a second, and um, mention uh, some of the concerns I had about the setup. And that took about 15 minutes to set up this small scenario. Gives you an idea if you had to uh, set up the entire Battle of Borodino, it's going to take you at least oh, maybe 45 minutes to an hour to set it up. But um, I'll mention the little nitpicks I have about the setup. In the French setup, they give you the name of the division and the core that it belongs to. So it's no problem uh, trying to find the uh, units of the core and the division. Unfortunately for the uh, Russians, they give you the Cavalry Corps, no problem. They give you like Shikovsky's Jaeger Regiment, Gogol's Jaeger Regiment, and um, Second Carassier's, but you don't know what corps they belong to, so it's a little clunky trying to look up individual units. Um, I wish the setup had been a bit more explicit. But let's take a look at the setup. There's a long shot first of the entire Borodino battlefield. You can see the French in blue on the left and the Russians in green. Now the French army is coming from the west. Moscow is to the east and the Russians are attempting to block the French. But I said this is only the Shevardino scenario. Let's take a closer look at it. There you see the town of Shevardino here and the Shevardino Redoubt and the approach by the French. And some more columns here and the 4th Cavalry there. 4th Cavalry is artillery here, and we have Russian reserves coming up the rear. So it's a nice little scenario, um, fairly historical, and um, any of you who are familiar with the battle, you'll know that the French finally drove the Russians from the position uh, at great uh, cost and casualties, though, and that set up for the conflict at Borodino, which is actually uh, two days later. After Shevardino, um, the army's rested for a day getting a position and the battle took place um, two days later. Um, anyway, that's the Shevardino setup. Okay, I've just done a turn or two of the uh, Shevardino Redoubt scenario and uh, the French captured the Redoubt and the uh, Russians have been counterattacking here. And they've had a bunch of units disordered. So um, just after doing a turn or two, I must admit I'm favorably impressed with the combat system. I'm sure that the uh, Grand Battle uh, will be a heck of a lot of fun, and um, I think I like this game, even though I've only been playing it for maybe 45 minutes or so. So, uh, in summary, uh, a very cursory examination of this game, I'm very uh, favorably impressed. It uh, kind of reminds me of a more advanced version of the old SPI Borodino that I liked so much back in 1972, I think it was. That game is virtually a quad game. This is far more sophisticated. But, um, so, yeah, overall, I uh, have to say I'm very, uh, very favorably impressed with this game. So that's Borodino, Battle of the Moskova, 1812, by Richard Berg 
and GMT.